The sponsor of this episode is Wix. Anyone can create a great website for free. How scared would a modern inhabitant of planet Earth be if he met one of these ancient relatives of the dog? Amphicionidae on a dark night. Also known as the bear dog, these creatures possessed frightening dimensions with a length of 2.5 meters, that's an astounding almost eight and a half feet long, and a weight of 500 kilograms, that's a gargantuan 1,100 pounds, or roughly half a ton. This beast was really creepy and scary as heck. Imagine this monster as something like what you would get if you put a bear's head on the body of a giant dog with jaws that could easily chomp right through the bones of large animals. This is exactly how the bear dog looked. Perhaps fortunately for us, but definitely sad for them. The bear dog disappeared from the face of the earth nine million years ago, long before the appearance of Homo sapiens. Perhaps if our ancestors had had the opportunity to encounter such a creature, they would have been much less likely to have had the idea to try to tame wolves into dogs. I must mention that, despite the obvious similarity to a dog and the presence of a common ancestor, the bear dog is still not a mainline direct ancestor of our modern pit bulls and chihuahuas. But then, which animal is? It might be that the role of the forefather of all dogs is no less impressive a beast than the dire wolf. So scientists named this largest predator of the canine family, and not for the sake of wit, but in all seriousness. Because of its great size, about two meters, or almost six and a half feet in length, and 70 kilograms, or about 155 pounds in weight, it was not quite as fast and didn't have the dexterity of modern wolves. However, its massive muscles and huge, deadly sharp canines turned this dire wolf into a ruthless killing machine, able to easily take down a mastodon or even a giant sloth. This monster only died out about 16,000 years ago, so interaction with Homo sapiens was inescapable. Alas, this did not end in interspecies friendship. Later, the traditional gray wolf appeared on the scene, which man did eventually manage to tame, gradually turning this heretofore wild animal into what we now know as the domestic dog, or so everyone thought until recently. But before continuing, let me tell you some good news. Thanks to our partners from Wix, the Riddle channel now has its own personal website. If you also want to make a website for yourself but don't know how to program, this is not a problem. With Wix Website Builder, they make sure that website creation is fun, convenient, and free. Go to Wix and create your website. Just click on the link in the description below the video. But if you need a mega super cool website, you can purchase a premium account and then the possibilities are almost limitless. All problems with hosting, mail, domain, Wix takes care of everything. Wix is even used by professional web developers, saving them time and making them more money. Go to the website and see for yourself. Wix.com is not just a website builder, but a leading cloud platform with millions of users all around the world. And now back to our intriguing mystery. The origin of our pet dogs as coming from wolves has for quite some time been considered as an undisputed truth. Authorities on this matter explain this sequence of events thusly. Ancient peoples picked up some wolf puppies somewhere, raised them for their own needs, and as a result, this spirited predator became an affectionate and obedient animal. But a group of American geneticists now has a different opinion. These scientists analyzed the genomes of more than one and a half thousand dogs belonging to 161 different breeds. As it turns out, despite the external differences, the dogs studied were all basically the same genetically. However, surprisingly, no close genetic link was found with wolves. Such a turn of events led researchers to the idea that these animals at some point developed separately from each other naturally and can be referred to as distant cousins descended from some common progenitor of the predatory mammals. In short, 
these scientists suggest that man has never tamed the wolf, but immediately took up the domestication of the dog. And the misconceptions regarding the heretofore proposed ultimate genetic paternity provided by wolves are explained by the fact that even though separate species, these animals sometimes mated, confusing geneticists all over the world. The oldest dog known to science, whose remains were found in present-day Belgium, lived some 31,700 years ago. In appearance, it somewhat resembles a Siberian husky, only with a size somewhat closer to that of a large shepherd, and with slightly enlarged teeth, with which it gnawed on the carcasses of musk oxen, horses, and deer. Whether it had a master who walked their antediluvian pet out the front door of their cave every morning is still unknown. As for the timing of exactly when domestication occurred, scientists simply cannot agree, referring to a range of different time intervals from between 10 to 40,000 years ago. But the most interesting thing is how this friendship between man and dog began. Indeed, many scholars believe that people didn't simply tame our four-fingered friends. They were domesticated. Some of these puppies learned that they didn't have to compete with Homo sapiens for prey. A young pup perhaps quickly learned that it was much easier to just wag its tail, drop its ears, and show its human caregiver that it was ready to carry out commands. And lo and behold, its master would then give their newfound canine chum everything it wanted. Thus, tens of thousands of years ago, dogs began to help people hunt game and graze cattle protecting the latter from other predators. Over time, our ancestors, when breeding dogs, learned how to select for the more desirable or useful qualities in such animals. Thanks to this, for example, in ancient Egypt, some early hunting dogs were bred to have vastly superior speed, allowing them to catch the fast and elusive gazelle. In another ancient state, Rome, people decided to extend the functionality of the dog turning these pets from hunters, shepherds, and watchmen into real fighters. These military dogs were pit against a variety of wild animals, often turning the entire affair into a royal bloody mess. However, with the fall of the Roman Empire, the animals became wild, terrifying local peoples and giving rise to many myths and legends regarding the so-called werewolves. It wouldn't be surprising if the doggy heroes of this ancient lore might be representatives of the giant Tibetan Mastiff breed, the first recorded references to which date back to 1121 BC. Once the dog finally found its way to the British Isles, this Tibetan giant eventually dropped its thick coat of fur and turned into the more well-known English Mastiff, the largest breed of dog in the world today. The height of this champion at the withers, that is, from the paws to the highest point on its spine, often reaches 90 centimeters, or about 35 inches. That's almost a yard. And the mass of this gargantuan beast regularly reaches over 100 kilograms, or 220 pounds. But a famous English Mastiff named Zorba really outdid himself, triumphing with 2.5 meters, or 8.2 feet in length, 94 centimeters, or 37 inches at the withers, with this amazing canine weighing in at the time of the record a little more than 155 kilograms, or 343 pounds. His record remains unbeaten to this day. This English breed of giants must, however, share its place of honor with another colossus, the Great Dane. This is due to its height, which at the withers can also reach an astounding 90 centimeters or three feet. That's one seriously big bitch, and yet, some German record breakers beat even this height with a couple of pooches named Zeus and George who exceeded even the one meter mark. Unfortunately, it's no longer possible to even take a photo with these wonderful, world-famous, gigantic dogs as these champions left this mortal coil at a fairly young age. Such a sudden death among these hero dogs is quite a common phenomenon. 
according to one Dr. Cornelia Krauss from the University of Göttingen. After analyzing information on dogs from 74 different breeds, Dr. Krauss came to the conclusion that the reasons for this are just the same for all of our four-footed friends. According to the assumptions of the researcher, life expectancy can even be calculated. For every two kilograms of animal mass, we must minus one month from their potential lifespan. According to Dr. Krauss, another enemy of these giant breeds is cancer the higher occurrence of which is explained by the accelerated growth of these dogs and, accordingly, their early aging, which leads to the development of abnormal cells. Thousands of years of living side-by-side -side with people has led not only to external changes for our furry canine pals, these lovely and fascinating creatures have also undergone some changes to their intellectual abilities. Surely many of us would love to hear about the special mental capabilities of our dogs, but they are not really quite as smart as we had previously assumed. A scientist by the name of Britta Osthaus has done a meta-analysis evaluating 300 studies regarding the intelligence of animals. She found that hyenas, raccoons, and dolphins perform many tasks much better than domestic dogs. Due to our great love for these faithful creatures, even scientists tend to put more emphasis on dog research, exaggerating its merits, while often underestimating the rest of the animal world. In fact, a dog doesn't really need to undertake such strenuous mental efforts, as it's often enough for it to simply gaze with canine compassion into the eyes of its master, who has no choice but to immediately fulfill their devious pet's desire. However, we must not allow such arguments to make us less love our funny furry friends. After all, this love is mutual. In fact, these feelings take place at a hormonal level. When a master homo sapiens and a dutiful canine familiaris look at each other, a small release of oxytocin occurs. This is the hormone responsible for trust and affection. The full mystery of this amazing friendship between man and dog has still not been solved, as in the natural world this connection no longer exists. However, the very existence of a creature that can love us human beings more than they love themselves is really worth appreciating. And we cannot forget that this most devoted companion has been wagging his tail in friendship with us for more than 10,000 years. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe, and click on the bell to always get notified when the latest, most remarkable video is coming soon to a computer screen near you.